for me, I think the biggest impact possible in the world would be to transform the business environments where people spend the majority of their time. Welcome to Making Bank. I am Josh Felber, where we uncover the mindset and the success strategies of the top 1% so you can amplify your life and your business today. I'm super honored and excited for today's guest. Knowing that if we focus on giving and truly seeking opportunities to help others in real tangible ways, then we experience true joy and fulfillment in our own lives. It's time to change the way you do things because you can serve people and have success at the same time. Why do we do this at home? Why do we love and serve at home? And then we get into business and we forget all that. Right. And we well, become it's, it's ruthless. Just business is not personal. You always have that say, so yeah. you're saying, no, I'm gonna throw that on its ear. I believe you have to be integrated. There you go. I invite you to join me in this journey because my mission is to completely transform the business world through selfless service and prove definitively once and for all that you do not have to be ruthless to win. Jonathan Kaiser. Welcome to Making Bank, my friend. Thanks for having yeah, me. Yeah, man, appreciate it. Super cool that we're able to get an awesome tour of your office here and everything. Not, and you have all your different principles. principles. This yep. is awesome. That's why we were shooting this way. Yep. Um, let's kind of start here, dude, and sure. like talk a little bit about why you came up this, with this and what this is all for, and then we'll go back to sure. rewind a well, little bit. Well, I, I used to be a ruthless, cutthroat, take-no-prisoners commercial real estate broker. Okay. I thought that's what it took to be successful. <laughs> I wasn't raised that way. My parents taught me to love and serve and give. Right. But when we got back from overseas, I realized we're kind of poor. Mm. So I decided I wanted to be rich. So I got into commercial real estate <laughs> because I wanted to be rich. Nice. The problem okay. was... The industry is pretty ruthless, pretty cutthroat. Oh, yeah. sure. So sort of like boiling a frog, I became ruthless, but I was miserable and I was misaligned with my core values, but I felt trapped. And then 15 years ago, I went to a conference and a speaker laid out for me a different way of doing business, a way of succeeding mm. by helping others. Okay. And it inspired me. I reinvented myself around it and then decided we were going to build a firm. And these 15 core operating principles is what we've built our company on. And they're all designed to build a culture of selfless service within our organization. And what was interesting, I know when we first walked in, um, when we were getting the tour, that was the very first thing on the main wall Everything that he for pointed us. out. Yep. Like, oh, wait, I almost didn't even see him there for a minute. Yeah. And then you look, they're you're like, subtle. Oh, yeah, they're real subtle. And then when you look, you're like, oh, wow, that is awesome. And mm. you really, it, which is super cool because I know for myself personally, just reading them and pieces of each of these I know I incorporate yes. in my life on a daily basis and I think that's why our good friend John Rulin connected us yes because uh, he knows us both pretty well so let's go ahead and rewind for a second though tell us a little bit about I guess how you got started and got to this point today because I know initially you were a missionary right mm -hmm. and serving other people mm -hmm. overseas correct yeah okay Tell yep. us a little bit my, that. All, and all then... my parents were about was loving and serving other people. Wow. And my, okay. and my parents' parents, right? And so for me, it was embedded deep within my upbringing to love and serve people. Okay. The problem was, is that my parents were poor. Sure. And so I associated helping other people or selfless service, as I call it today, with going broke. And, and a lot of missionary people are. They, they're they not there for the money. They're, they're there not. to help and serve and everything else. Yes. Just like that. Yep. And that's what you were surrounded with 100%. for that. And then I get in back into regular society. And I look around and all these kids have all this stuff. <laughs> and this wearing stuff. cool clothes <laughs> right? and driving cool cars. And I had none of it. And so that's what really motivated me. I wanted to be rich. I wanted to make bank. You know, right. I wanted to be in the 1%. Sure. So, you know, that started me down a path. And again, like my, my good buddy of mine, he said, you should get into commercial real estate. He goes, you, you want your own private jet someday? Get into commercial <laughs> real estate. So I got in and again, it, it was ruthless and 
reinvented myself after that realization five years in. And it was a long, hard road. I mean, reinventing yourself is oh, yeah. not easy. And it took me about five years. And in the process, most people lost faith in what I was doing. They thought I was crazy. I went broke. But on the other side of that, I'd helped so many people that I started getting referrals back. And so, again, it's a very similar message to what you and I know through John Rulin. Right. right? It's this idea of paying it forward to other people and serving. And my whole mission in life now with Kaiser is I want to show the world that it's actually possible to be successful without being ruthless. Mm. That you could actually succeed, even in arguably one of the most cutthroat industries in the right. world, by loving and serving other people. And that's why I wrote the book. So, yeah, and I know you have a book, um, Ruthless to Win, but it says you don't have to be ruthless right. to win. I saw that. I was like, oh, wait, there it is. <laughs> we did the you don't have to be really small to and capture definitely. people's attention. Yeah. <laughs> no, that's super cool. So tell me a little bit about what you were doing ruthlessly sure. and then how that is a total transformation now what you're doing. Totally. And there, there's a lot of ways to portray it, but I'll, I'll do it in, in one simple way, which is inside of the organizations, typically within commercial right. real estate brokerage, everybody's fighting, scratching, clawing okay. to get their way to the top. Got it. Here at Kaiser, all that we do is try to help each other succeed. Okay. And through the process, we all collectively rise. Mm. So, so when, when, I, when, we, when we won our first uh, Best Places to Work, they shoved the mic in my face and said, okay, what, what makes your company different? <laughs> right. And the thing I said was at Kaiser, every one of our people tries really hard to figure out how they can serve the people around them. Okay. And at the other, at the other firms, all the firms that are traditional, right. the idea is how much can I get? What, what can I accomplish for myself? What, what maneuvering can I do to get what's in my best interest at your expense? Sure. And that's a huge difference, right? So if, you, if you're in this business because you want to be successful yet you feel like you have to get up every day and almost be like a used car salesman and fight and scrap. Like that, that, that's not Taking a fun. Taking stuff from other people, cutting their deals out Got from it. underneath exactly. them and everything. No, and it's interesting you say it because people are always like, what's in it for me, what's in it for me? And a lot of times, I mean, it's not just in that specific right. uh, profession or whatever. I mean, you know, whether it's in e-commerce business or, uh, you know, other entrepreneurs, it's like, okay, how can, you know, um, I beat you out and all yes. that. I mean, we, the marketplace is infinite. There's so many people out there. There's so much opportunity mm. and abundance, but I think we sell ourselves short and we uh, by thinking the other way. Yes. We're like, oh, what's in it for me? What's in it for me? I, I have to, my business has got to be better than yours. Mm. I got to take your business for me to grow. Yeah. And I don't think it is that way. I don't think so. I mean, this idea of scarcity, I think drives a lot of things. And for us, yeah. making sure that you're thinking from an abundance mindset, understanding that at the end of the day, I call it speed to trust, mm, right? Okay. What, what causes people to hire you over someone else? Right. Do they trust you more? Do they trust that you're going to do the best job for them? Do they trust that you're going to have their back in whatever it is you're selling? Sure. Right? To me, what I believe and what I've created here and what we embody and live is this idea of the more that you selflessly help other people, right. the more you automatically speed up that trust process. Mm. But you have to do it authentically. Okay. It can't be gained. Right. Right. And so we also have a Kaiser Institute and we teach this reinvention from the inside out. Right. You got to be the change you want to see in the world. Yes. Then you create a company culture around it. Okay. And then you deal with all your external stakeholders in that same way. So it's an inside out revolution all around driving a selfless culture for your organization. And, you know, that's interesting you say that because, you know, I'm thinking, you know, we have, uh, it's not as big as you guys, but we have roughly 25 people on our team, mm. you know, back uh, with our health and wellness company and everything. And I'm trying Which to is think, an amazing company, by the way. Yeah, thank you. Congratulations. And, you know, I'm trying to think, okay, cool. How can we create and inspire what kind of what you guys mm. are doing from the inside out? Mm -hmm. And so let's say somebody's going into they want to reinvent and rebuild that from the inside out. What's kind of that first part of the process? Sure. So the thing that I would say is the hardest part for most people is getting out of their own heads and okay. figuring out how to be present and how to really ask good questions okay. to identify what people may need. Because regardless of what, you know, people are people. And right. they're individuals that have needs and that have, and that have wants and desires. And so the more that you can 
focus your energy on whoever's in front of you that you want to do business with. Sure. And instead of trying to pitch or say how great you are, here's all the things I've done. Right. You're really getting to know them. You're really looking for ways to serve them. And it becomes this incredible process where they, the people actually feel heard. They feel, they feel liked, they feel desired. And if it's authentic, it creates this kind of quick speed to trust in the relationship because everybody else is always trying to get something first. Right. So we try okay. to give something first. So with that then, what are you, like working with each of your employees here and everything? Because I know one of the things I mentioned as we were walking through was everybody's kind of on the same level. We are. There's no like hierarchy or different like that, different things like that in the company. So how, like I guess, what are you doing to empower each of those mm. individuals then to uh, create that service yeah. and that self-service? That's a great question. Self selflessness. So I love, I love authenticity okay. as a word. I love vulnerability as a word. Mm. And so one of the things that I say about these principles is that the hardest part about creating a culture right. of selfless service is you as the leader have to actually live this stuff. <laughs> For sure, yeah. You actually have to, have to do it, right? And how do you know that you're doing it? Because most organizations are set up where they push down negative feedback right. to the top because the top normally doesn't want to hear it. So for us, we actually have an award. And it's called the Courage to Disagree Award. <laughs> and it's designed for, some, for me, right. right? So when someone sees me not living one of these things, we have a, we've created a culture right. where they're rewarded, where they're uh, applauded, where they, okay. they get to put an award on their thing for, for, for pointing out. So this, so this culture then becomes something that's not mine. Okay. And it's not just words on a wall that I don't live, but right. I expect everybody else to live, sure. like a lot of organizations. But this becomes something that's alive and that creates our culture daily and that other people can buy into and say, this is me. And that's how you do it. And that's why we've been able to be successful because we've been able to attract the best people that are aligned around this philosophy, that have been looking for something like this their entire lives. And we don't punish mistakes. And right. so it's like yeah. we're, people are empowered. They're empowered to go do their best and pitch in. And you know, most organizations are the opposite of that. Most, right. people, most, pre, most people contributed about 30 to 40% of what they could to the organizations they work for because they dislike the culture, they dislike their manager, they don't feel heard, whatever the case may be. So we empower our people. Interesting, yeah, and I think that's true because just being around other organizations and seeing you mm -hmm. know, a lot of that, uh, and I'm, we try to do that kind of how you guys are talking about, but I'm trying to think, cool, you know, how can we do this even better? Mm -hmm. How can we encourage more? And I think one of the big things too, was I think with the way you guys have all your principles, mm. is there they were at the front, they were on another wall, they were here and you know in this room here, and which is super cool because you guys provide you do some additional coaching and yeah. things like that, which mm -hmm. is huge um, overall, you know for for each of the employees. Um, we also lead off every meeting with them. Oh really? So every okay. meeting we go through them, and they're not short, right? I mean, no, it yeah, they're takes it probably five takes minutes, 10, 10 10 minutes to yeah, five it. or yeah. ten minutes to get. But through we them go all. through them, and then a lot of times we'll have people talk about where they weren't one or where they were one. Mm. I love pointing out where I missed the mark because I missed the mark a lot. <laughs> well, right? yeah, but it's that, that, that vulnerability that that enables people to buy in and make this their own. Sure. And what um, one of the things that you said that was really interesting was when they were helping each other out and growing. So obviously, you guys are in the commercial real estate space, mm -hmm. there's deals happening mm -hmm. and things like that. How are they then working as a team or working to help mm -hmm. each other close those deals mm -hmm. or you know, as the deals are coming in, you know, everybody, people aren't like, oh, those are mine, those totally. are the best leads. You, totally. know, you don't get those. Kind Again, of it starts with culture because if you focus on behavior, <clears throat> it's right. a step ahead of where you need to focus on. Sure. Got to get the right people wired the right way embedded in the culture. So that's the first part. It's very, very important. So I guess then, how do you then, do? You, obviously you went through your hiring process, mm -hmm. how do you then extract and find out to make sure those are the right people for your culture? The, yeah, that's a whole process, <laughs> right? That's what I figured. And sometimes we still make the wrong choice. Sure, it happens. Choice, yeah. you know? And I've had to let people go and that wasn't always easy. Right. But you know, at the end of the day, you got to do what you got to do to keep your culture alive. So I guess and that's the number one lesson I've learned actually is get try, rid of, get, get rid of the people that are totally of, not there. Yeah. And it yeah, doesn't mean they're sure. bad. It just means they're not a fit, right? It just means they're misaligned with your culture. Yes. So anyways, going back to your question, what makes it 
different is that when I was at a traditional firm, right, I never talked about the deals that I was working on ever you because I didn't want anybody to know out. about them, okay. steal them, whatever. Sure. Oh, yeah. So, so there was no collaboration, no mm. assistance, massive secrecy. Here, <laughs> we leverage all of our collective knowledge, market, market data, right. all the things that we could help each other. We do that and we do it freely. And we do it with the understanding that the more that we serve, the more that ultimately comes back to us. Mm. So this whole concept of give and you shall receive. Right. And this is not a new idea. No, right? it's, it's, it's been yeah. around for yeah. a long right. time. <laughs> and we all kind of get it as humans in our personal lives. Sure. Right. We know how to do with our kids and with our families. And then we get into business and some somehow we think we got to like <laughs> get all tough and fight, fight, fight. Right. And my message is, hey. What if you didn't? What if there was a better way? What if you could actually love and serve people and win and make bank and be successful? And that's the point. That's that missing connection for me growing up as a missionary kid was poor equals service. Sure. Rich equals ruthless. So I'm trying to slash through that and saying I figured out how to, how to love it. and serve yep. and still <clears throat> kick ass and take names. That's you know really interesting. You, you've been able to merge and mm -hmm. take you know, from the, the, the service part of it, as well as, you know, how to make bank in business mm -hmm. and combine the two to really make things happen. Mm -hmm. One of the things, um, what would you say for you from a, I guess, a success mindset or has helped you throughout your journey mm. um, kind of get to this level? Mm. Well, I think for me it was, I was determined to never give up. Okay. Right? Sure. So this idea of, you know, in our in our tagline, it's relentless client champion. So we're we're relentless in our pursuit. So I think that defines me as well. It's just That's that awesome. never give up. Right. I mean, my reinvention process was brutal. Right? It was a long, hard road. And I just had to grip my teeth. <laughs> just I call it the Kobe chin when he was in the finals. Yeah. He was sticking his chin out. It's like just willing it to being. And I think there's an element of that. The other thing that I think is really important for me is I have what I call my personal I am statements. Okay. And I create for myself every morning who I want to be in the world in the future, but I do in the present tense. Okay. And so that's part of my morning ritual where I do that. Um, Can you give us an example? Sure. So I have, you know, the, I, I've gone through many different iterations as I've evolved. Right. Them. Yeah. I do them, I redo them every year, but they're a combination of, uh, kind of Napoleon Hill's Think and Grow Rich, kind right. of visualize what you want your future to look okay. like. So there's a piece of that, and I do it for my family, I do it for my business, That's I do awesome. it for my personal health, all that stuff. And then I also describe what state of being okay. I want to come from, hmm. right? So that's my state of being creates everything around me. So that's the most important part for me Right, is like ones like I am love. Okay. Right. And just visualizing and feeling love. Right. So I do that across all of my different um, mantras. And I, I love to do it on my spin bike in the morning. <laughs> and so I can get through my iterations three yeah. times. And so by the time I'm done, like, my head's pumped up, my body's pumped up, and I'm ready to go. It's all locked in. Yeah. Well, it's interesting you say that was um, <clears throat> my boys started a clothing company called gratitudegear.com. That's cool. And so they have I am shirts. So they have I am nice. powerful. I am you know loving. I am. And then they have a bunch of different gratitude quotes. And I got to get some shirts. All. Yeah. Well, so as you were saying, I'm like, wait a minute. That's super cool. That's It lines up with that's exactly really cool. what they're trying to do and get out to the world. and everything. Because that's what we do that when um, they go to bed at night. We go through prayers and reading the Bible and different things like that. But then at the end, they say their I am's mm. and what they were grateful for for the mm. day. It's beautiful. And man. so that's always anchored in at the end of every day before they go to bed. Man, I love that. We have a routine in the morning. <clears throat> when I, I, my favorite thing to do is take my kids to school. That is cool. my special time. And we have family I am's that we've created. We all do them. To, first, we do a breathing exercise. Then we do our family <laughs> I am's. And then each of them have created their own their personal own. I am's. Oh, nice. And we hold that in sacred honor. And all the other kids are quiet when it's not their turn. Right. And they create it and they visualize it and they go on to the next one. So it's like training that those habits. For sure. In are the huge. kids, I think is very powerful. That's awesome. And if awesome. I could go back in time and teach my younger self one thing, that's what i teach myself. Right. Because I, I had so much self-doubt. I had so much. I wasn't sure what was possible. 
and there's so much negative narrative hitting everyone all the time that if you don't intentionally create yourself, so my mm. very first yeah. I am statement is I am JK, as everybody calls me JK, <laughs> I am JK and who I am is far more real than anything outside of me. So mm. to me what that means is irrespective of external feedback, right. irrespective, irrespective of success or failure, irrespective of anything, I decide. And For from sure. that place of who I be, everything is created. That's and that's awesome. where that relentlessness comes in because it's so easy. As an entrepreneur, you know oh, this yeah. very well. It's You have your up and down days, right? And it's so easy in your down days to start to lose faith in all the things that you're committed to. And so that daily reminder, that daily creation of yourself enables the rest of your day. No, that's, and it's interesting. You brought up relentless several times. And I know for me, that was one of the big things when I was little, you know, 14, starting my first real company and uh, just my journey and reading Tony Robbins and Napoleon Hill and mm -hmm. all that stuff. And part of what, when people ask me, it's like, you know, what are those different things that you think have got you there? And it's like relentless and the drive and everything. Mm. That's, you know, what has been able, because I didn't, I don't have that like failure switch in my head. Like, oh, I don't look at it like, oh, this isn't going to work because of this, this, and this. I'm like, it's going to be awesome. And I go to go after check it this and crush out. it. Yeah, check this out. This is what's happening. So it's cool that you have that same yeah. mindset with, uh, with that and everything overall. For you, what in your life or what is that, what are those things or those core drivers? Like you wake up every mm. morning and you do this because. Mm. Yeah, for <clears throat> me, it's real simple. I live a very imbalanced life intentionally. I think there's okay. a lot of, there's a lot of, I don't agree with a balanced life because I think that right. the idea spreads you too thin across too many things. Sure. I believe in a hyper-focused life. Right. So for me, it's my family and it's my mission here at Kaiser. I want to change the business world, my man. I want to save 5,000 brokers globally from the miserable, ruthless, <laughs> cutthroat environments they find themselves in. And so to me, getting up, inspiring my, my, my myself with my family and all the blessings in my life. Right. And then going to the to the office and, and and really focusing on changing the world and changing people's lives, and then coming home and hanging out with my family again. <laughs> that's what, what else do you is. need, man? Yeah. That's, that's what I and, and you know like to work out, like to go snowboarding and stuff. But for the most part, man, I'm a laser focused dude. No, that's awesome. It's interesting you bring that up because one of the things I've always I talk about a lot and kind of teach on is you know how balance is not. You don't want to be balanced because mm. when you're balanced, you're fighting. It's like that teeter totally. totter, and it's like one side more, one side, and then you're always worn out and tired because of the balance. And so I always talk about and teach like integration. Mm. So integrating family and your entrepreneurship, and totally. You know, that's one of the things that we did um, when our kids were really young is integrated them in with what we're doing. So it's awesome. You know, whether it was bringing them into conferences or to uh, around the businesses. And that sort of thing. And naturally, they have just started, oh, wait, well, oh, you're doing this. Well, why are you doing this? And like, our, now our daughter is 11, and at 6, she was like checking out our natural health products that we were making. Mm. She's like, Mom, you know, why don't, you know, will these work on pets? Mm. And she's like, well, I don't know. And so she would research, and oh, wait, oh, these ingredients aren't good for pets, but these are. So she mm. formulated her own natural organic pet care line of products and launched it on a website and everything. And that's cool. But just being around, you know, and that's the same with our boys. They were like, they're like, oh, well, what can we start? Well, we got to figure out something that you can start with basically no dollars and that you don't have to have employees. You don't have to do this. Yep. And so they're like, well, you know, we talked about different ideas and that's how they came up. Oh, a t-shirt business, but it's already on demand printed. So they don't have to worry about any of that. And they just have to get out and market it and everything. That's and, awesome. You know, they built, I think their Instagram account from zero to roughly 30 or 40,000 followers That's already. Amazing. And, yeah, using the different strategies and techniques and all that. So integrating, you know, mm -hmm. like you and you're, you're bringing your family in, mm -hmm. into it, I think is a huge point. Yes, I agree. Um, I know we have a little bit of time left. What would you say um, you want to really express in, you know, your, one question, you're like, Josh, I wish you'd ask this, but you haven't mm -hmm. asked this yet. You know, something that you really want to yeah. get and let our audience know about. Yeah, I think, you know, for me, I believe that most business people are pretty miserable, mm. right? They don't really love sure. doing what they do. And it's not usually because the tasks they have to do suck. Right. It's because the environments they are in suck. Mm. So for me, I think the biggest impact possible in the world 
would be to transform the business environments where people spend the majority of their time. Right. To, to evolve the conversations, to evolve the interactions from this all about me mindset to all about others. And, and, and what I believe that does is collectively unlocks the good we could do for each other and raises all ships. Right. Right? Yeah. And so to get away from this scarcity mindset into abundance, to get away from selfishness into selflessness. And right. my message is selfless service is selfish. <laughs> selfless service is sure. self-interested. Right. Right? The more that you give, the more that you get. I'm not a talking head. I'm not a theorist, right? I'm in the most ruthless industry in the world. Oh yeah. yeah. And we have an amazing firm that succeeds, that wins, that's growing by leaps and bounds, not because I'm cool, but because we have found a way to help others succeed. Mm -hmm. And in return, that helps us succeed. And it's such a cool philosophy that I'm just excited for people to learn more about it, which is why I wrote the book, You Don't Have to Be Ruthless to Win. <laughs> and you know, speaking of your book, what, where's the best place if people want to like, hey, I want to check out sure. Jonathan's book, where should I go get it at? So we got it on Amazon, got it on Audible. Cool. You can go to ruthlessbook.com and there's a bunch of free stuff there as well. But yeah, re get it, read it. Hopefully it's transformative. I took everything that I've learned over transforming myself into a selfless leader from being a right. ruthless prick and packed it into that book. Awesome. And you know, it's interesting too how you're talking about you know, changing the company culture mm. and doing that kind of thing. Um, like, cause I know Gary Vaynerchuk talks a lot about mm. that and they brought in like a, a chief heart officer, you know, to, to help with culture and, yeah. and do everything. Mm -hmm. And he tries, he's tries to do something similar. It sounds like with how you're doing it and trying to transform from the inside out mm. and helping people mm. in, you know, in his office and mm. making them better people. Mm. I guess, uh, one last thing, um, any amazing insights that you've just really, that pop out to you that you've learned over the years? You're like, guys, this is something, you know, dear and close to me. Yeah, I mean, love people, mm. you know, because at the end of the day, what drives everything is relationships. Sure. And if you boil service down to its core, it's love. Right. You know, my mom taught me how to love. My mom loved selflessly her entire life. And that same love is what I convey when I'm with people. And that's what's intoxicating, right? That's For what sure. people want. People are lonely, people are miserable, people feel underappreciated. If you can love and serve people, you're gonna have massive impact on the world. But it's not an instant gratification play, <laughs> right. right? This is the long game. <laughs> sure. And you have to be really, truly interested in long-term sustainable success to do this. So if you're just looking for a quid pro quo, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> turn it off now, this is not the show for you. But yeah, I mean, it's people like you spreading these messages into the world and doing good in the world that are going to make all of this possible. So thank you for all that you do. For sure. Um, no, and just I really appreciate your time today, mm -hmm. guys. I hope you guys are really paying attention. To, uh, if not, go back, rewind, listen, and watch mm -hmm. this again. Make sure you guys are paying close attention to what Jonathan's saying. He's dropped some amazing insights and different things that will help you elevate your personal life as well as what you're doing as an entrepreneur in your business life and everything as well. So take those notes, pay attention, watch this as many times as possible until you extract all these pits of information that are going to help you. So Jonathan, I really appreciate your time today. It's an honor man. to have you on Making Bank, Thanks for man, having me. as you're making bank and changing the world in many ways. So again, thank you for your time today. My pleasure, brother. I am Josh Felber. You are watching Making Bank. Get out and be extraordinary.